Hey guys, what's up? Mel Williams, your emotional health and relationship mentor. So in this video, I want to talk about how I've seen some videos of South Korean women coming online and basically downplaying the 4B movement. And I totally understand and I can totally respect, you know, setting the record straight according to their words because they're like, hey, they just want to make sure that the whole world doesn't think that all South Korean women are on the 4B movement, X, Y, and the third. And so I'm going to cover a couple of points in this video to kind of, um, I guess, set the record straight on them setting the record straight, okay? Because again, I totally understand how social media can create this sort of sensualization and people just, you know, take it and run with it. But again, let's cover a couple of things to really, truly set the record straight. So the first thing that, you know, some of the videos that I've seen of South Korean women trying to set the record straight and essentially, you know, have a bias and downplay the 4B movement is that they want to point out that the majority isn't, you know, following the 4B movement. They want to point out that it's just a small group of women that, you know, feel this way and that have decided to, you know, they call it being super extreme for women deciding to, again, not date men, not marry men, not have kids with them, not have sex with them, okay? So they want to make it clear that, hey, it's not, you know, the majority, okay? So the first thing I want to point out is that obviously, you know, the 4B movement, to my knowledge, never presented itself as, you know, it was the majority. It was just, again, this maybe social media sensationalization. This is something that a lot of women can relate to. So it's not even the fact of, you know, the numbers to me, in my opinion, don't matter. It doesn't matter how many women are, you know, in the 4B movement or not over there. The fact of the matter is that so many women, once they read about it or saw what was going on, they could actually relate to why these women would want to do that. They could actually, you know, they all had something in common. We all had something in common and was like, hey, you know, we can totally understand why this makes logical, perfect sense for these women to decide that they don't want to have any sort of sexual relation or contact with men because they are basically mistreating and abusing women and treating them as though they're not human beings. And so I also want to say shout out to all of the men that actually, you know, saw the movement and you totally understood why women would, you know, want to not have anything to do with men and also you understood that women not having or wanting anything to do with men was not an attack on men it was not you know disrespectful to men as some of the toxic men have come out and you know basically shared that women wanting to not have anything to do with men because men have been mistreating them um basically saying that it's disrespectful and x y and the third and again trying to basically they're becoming and exhibiting exactly why women would even be interested in the idea of a 4b movement is because men like that again you don't really truly care about women you don't really truly care about understanding them and their concerns you just constantly see this thing as this like battle between who's superior and who's not and who's in control and who's not so again, the response by toxic men has been to basically retaliate and to form their own movement where they're, you know, they're basically mimicking the 4B movement. So again, in my humble opinion, it really has nothing to do with how many women, whether it's the majority or the minority over there. Um, and again, I get setting the record straight. But again, the fact is, is that there are women everywhere, no matter what continent you are on. There are women everywhere who can absolutely relate to why women would want to not want to, you know, deal with or interact with men because men have historically had a very violent and, you know, abusive history of interactions with women and women have been basically oppressed by that. The other thing that I kind of want to bring to light when it comes to the number of things is that, of course, normally in the beginning of any sort of movement, like it's not like the majority automatically hops on the bandwagon and, you know, they go with the movement. Oftentimes, whenever a movement or something that's different or that isn't the norm, you know, gets started, it's oftentimes going to start with a, you know, small majority of people. And then it kind of grows from there because again you're talking about going against the you know patriarchal norm that's been established women not having anything to do with men that's not you know normal that's you know out of the blue and you know against the norm and all these other things like you've seen in the toxic videos of men that are kind of like taking it as an attack on them and again they probably don't even feel comfortable and safe, you know, expressing it, you know, to a large degree and whatnot. So to me, it's logical and common sense that, you know, it's probably going to be a minority of women and not necessarily the majority. The fact of the matter is, like I said in the first point, is that so many women, no matter what continent you're on, can basically relate to why women are doing this anywhere. So to sum up the first two points that I made, basically the amount of women, I don't care if it's less than 5,000, 500, whatever the case might be, like the fact that there are, you know, a number of women that can relate 
to what this small minority is doing in one part of the world is the way it is. That's also setting the record straight. It's just a matter of fact that it doesn't matter if the movement started with 50 women or if it started with 5,000 women. The fact of the matter is, is that so many women, no matter where they are in the world, no matter what the religion, the culture is, the differences between, you know, cultures and whatnot, so many women can relate to this one essential resounding truth, apparently, that men historically have a poor track record of how they treat women to the point where women don't want anything to do with them. And women everywhere can relate to that. And to further add to that point is that every culture, no matter where we are located on this earth, has a history of this, has a history of men that basically abuse women, treat them violently, and again, brings us to present day to where so many women can still relate to what the women who started and support the 4B movement are basically saying is that, hey, we are done dealing with men who, you know, because of the fact that they have a history and present day, you know, track record of treating women so poorly. So essentially, if you are the bully on the playground and if like all the kids or, you know, a certain kid that you've been bullying decides, hey, I don't want anything to do with you. Leave me alone. I'm checking out. I'm not even going to go to the school anymore because of you being a bully to me. If the bully all of a sudden takes offense to that response and that reaction to the consequences of their behavior and their bullying and now they try to make themselves the victim they try to make themselves you know the one that's hurt because someone doesn't want to stay on the same playground or go to the same school where they continually bully them and let them get bullied and mistreated then that's kind of exactly what you know the scenario of the 4b movement is illustrating the bullies the oppressors they're taking offense to women that are saying hey i don't want to be bullied anymore i don't want to go to this school anymore i don't want to go to this playground i don't want to be around you anymore and the toxic men in this case the bullies and the oppressors the ones that are causing you know the person that's bullied to feel this way are you know saying hey you know, you got a problem with me bullying you, what's wrong with you? This is the way it's supposed to be. And I'm going to take offense to the fact that you don't, you know, let me continue to bully you. So the 4B movement, in short, is relatable, it's still relevant today. And even when women were fighting for the right to vote and, you know, have their opinions and to marry for love versus money and survival, like that started off as a small minority as well. And they fought for, you know, centuries, I'm going to say it was three generations. So that was what you know, 19, it started in the early 1900s, I want to say, and it wasn't until like even 1970s still that women didn't have the right to like have their own credit card. So things like this, you know, it takes time. It's not something that just instantly sparks a fire and, you know, like disappears or like has this big, you know, impact is definitely a small thing that grows over time. And it's been simmering over time already, like I said, because this is a historical thing. This isn't something that, you know, we just woke up today and saw how men treated women. This is something that every, you know, country and continent, no matter what your culture and religion is, it has a history. If you look at the history, you'll see a systemic history of men basically abusing women simply based on the fact of gender, because they think that, you know, men are superior and women are inferior for whatever reason. The second main point I kind of already touched on is the fact that whenever you have a, you know, new idea or someone that's going against the norm, oftentimes it's going to start off as a majority because again, it can be a pretty scary and intimidating thing, especially depending on the culture of your, you know, country and where you're at. If you're allowed to really truly have that freedom of expression and whatnot without, you know, there being retaliation or you fearing for your life and whatnot, then there's the reality of that as well. So whenever you state something that's so unpopular, especially again, to the person that's in charge or, you know, the person that's basically controlling and running everything, in this case, men, um, then you have that reality that you have to face that, hey, you're really taking a stand against, you know, the large majority, against oftentimes a powerful opposition. And so again, there's going to be, you know, many people are going to be afraid. Many people are going to want to stay in their comfort zone. So whenever you have, you know, a few small minority that's going to speak up and say something, then it's no surprise that, you know, most majority people are going to 
you know, stay average, stay the norm, and continue to follow along with the programming that's, you know, already been there and that isn't necessarily working, not necessarily great, but, you know, I am comfortable with where I'm at. So the few minority that, you know, push against the norm, that are willing to take the risk, that are willing to, you know, take the consequences of pushing against the norm, then oftentimes it's just the reality that it's not going to be a lot of people that are brave enough to do that. And the third and final point that I'll touch on in this video that I can recall that I want to discuss discuss is again the 4b movement never said anything about disrespecting men never said anything about hating men it's just again in some of these videos with the south korean women who are there trying to set the record straight they're presenting kind of their own bias they're kind of presenting it as you know like the toxic men have saying that when women decide that they want their you know oppressor and the person who's bullying them abusing them to leave them alone so they just check out and you know go to another school or say i'm not going to go here anymore they they basically interpret that as oh you hate men and oh you know you're disrespecting men blah 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 but I'm the one that you know I don't hate men I don't disrespect men I still want a man to be married to so you know basically again it kind of internalizes this you know me versus you type of deal it basically presents this us against them the women who love men versus the women who hate men and again the 4b movement never said anything about you know hating or disrespecting men they just said that hey Due to the fact that we can't feel safe with men, due to the fact that, you know, we don't trust them with our safety, with our physical safety, mental, emotional safety, we just don't want to have anything to do. We don't want to participate. You know, we don't want to sit at this lunch table. We don't want to play on this playground. We don't want anything to do with this. And that has nothing to do with, you know, being disrespectful. It doesn't even have necessarily anything to do with being hateful. Of course, you know, the reality of the matter is, is if you've been bullied by someone, then there could be a tendency where you do, you know, hate the oppressor. You hate the ones that have bullied you and whatnot. But it doesn't necessarily equate to I want, you know, to feel safe and I want to be left alone. That doesn't necessarily equate to hating, you know, someone or even the oppressor. It just equates to I want to, you know, survive and live and, you know, not have to worry about dealing with someone that is going to oppress me or abuse me or hurt me. So even if hate does happen to be present, I am sure that most people can logically understand that it's warranted, that it's understandable, that, you know... It's logical for someone to hate someone who has bullied them or oppressed them or made them feel unsafe and, you know, caused them pain and suffering. That's logical, you know, human emotion to understand. But in the case of the 4B, they didn't say anything about we're doing this because we hate men. We're doing this because we want to be disrespectful or whatever. It has nothing to do with that. It's simply stating that I no longer see where I feel safe or it's in my best interest to interact with men who have this reputation of being abusive and harmful to my well-being. So I want nothing to do with that. Just that simple. Self-preservation. And again, a lot of women from anywhere, no matter where you are, can relate to this. Self-preservation. If I don't feel safe, if I don't feel, you know, cared for, loved, looked out for, and all these other things in a relationship with a man, then I'm just better off, you know, on my own and not putting myself in jeopardy, not putting myself in a position where someone who could be this close to me, whether it's in an intimate relationship or any other sort of relationship, where they can have, you know, such close access to me to cause me harm and to cause me damage so hopefully this video helps make sense okay absolutely yes there is the reality that social media can sensationalize something and cause it to spread like wildfire but in the case of the 4b movement i think it's more so to do with the fact that so many women have either learned history or experienced it personally firsthand or you know again seeing how the how relatable and how relevant the 4b movement is still is even today and a lot of men again the toxic ones they live in this fantasy world of how the world was great for everyone when you know men were you know the traditional husbands and women were the traditional wives but again they're ignoring the fact and the reality that women didn't really have a choice women really didn't have a voice men were basically dictating to women how women were supposed to you know live and be valued Valued. So when we really like study history and learn for ourselves the realities of what life was like back then for, you know, the men and women back then, and we come to present day and see that, you know, a lot has changed, but a lot really hasn't changed, then we can truly understand and speak from an educated place and an educated standpoint on why people would choose, you know, 
to go a different route. From what I've seen, I will just say that I've seen a lot of people that don't seem to have a good, you know, well-rounded knowledge and context of like some of these situations and discussions and that matters, okay? So again, everybody can respectfully choose, you know, what's right for them and what's not right for them. But whenever you see movements like this, you got to start asking yourself, why? Like, why would someone do this? And then also ask yourself, who benefits from, you know, the norm? Who is benefiting from the norm? Who is truly, you know, reaping the benefits of the norm? And what definition? That's the other important thing. How are we defining the norm? Who wrote history? Who, you know, said that this was the norm to begin with and who benefits from it? And once you start doing the research, pulling back the layers and answering that question, then maybe you can better understand, you know, why one side might be pro or against, you know, a movement or idea or whatever the case might be. Hope this video helps. The 4B movement is basically a feminist movement that is saying that, hey, as human beings, women should be, you know, safe and be treated as equal and be respected and whatnot. And of course, again, the patriarchy society really creates this, you know, superior, inferior dynamic where that's not the case. And women are saying we're tired of it. Okay, so the 4B movement is just one way, particularly pertaining to romantic life, dating, relationships, and all of that, where women are saying, hey, if we can't feel safe, you know, and if we can't feel respected, and basically the same way that men feel in a relationship, feeling safe, respected, and whatnot whenever they're with a woman, if that courtesy can't be extended to us, and really, I wouldn't even call it a courtesy, it's just a common human decency thing to expect, in a relationship is that you feel safe, loved, and cared for. So if the man is entering into a relationship and he's looking at a woman and he's like, in this relationship with this woman, I expect to be, you know, loved, cared for, feel safe and whatnot, and I have to worry about my safety and whatnot. Women are saying, hey, we want the same thing. When we enter into a relationship with a man, we want to feel safe, cared for, loved, and all of that, respected, the same way that a man would expect from us, we would expect that from him.